It's new, it's fresh, and it might just be the most fun class that I've played yet. Hey there friends, it's Livid here, and welcome to Legacy Gaming. Today, after crunching the numbers and doing a lot of testing, we're diving into Lost Ark and sharing our ultimate endgame guide for the Glaive Year. Now, Kodiak and I have been on a hiatus for just a little bit, taking care of some major life changes and some other big stuff. But that didn't stop me from putting in the grind during my spare time to fully prepare for the arrival of the Glavier class. Now, our goal with these guides is to give you as much insight about a class as we possibly can, to help you figure out if it's the right one for you, to either make an alt or fully main swap. Now, just keep in mind that this build guide will be focusing on utilizing the pinnacle class engraving over control. We will have this guide fully chaptered down below as well, so feel free to jump around to the sections that you specifically need. Let's start at the top. Why play the Glavier? Well, if you've been looking for a highly mobile, close to mid-range, stance-dancing monster, but didn't find Deadeye or Gunslinger to be your cup of tea, Glavier might be the one that you were actually looking for. Now she touts two distinct skill sets that you can swap between called Focus and Flurry, each stance represented by one of her two weapons. Now while in Focus Stance, otherwise referred to as Red Stance, the Glavier will wield a short spear to unleash a furious barrage of attacks that are more up close and personal. Here she will be taking advantage of her high chance to crit. While in Flurry Stance, otherwise referred to as Blue Stance, she will instead utilize her Glaive to hit targets further away with graceful sweeping attacks. You can press your Z key at any time to swap weapons and change between your Focus and Flurry stances. But to fully take advantage of stance swapping, you'll need to understand how her dual meter works. As you deal damage to enemies with your skills, your dual meter will charge, filling up to three segments in a U-shaped pattern. Now, depending when you swap stances, the level of your meter energy at that time will determine how potent of a buff you receive for 12 seconds. Now, the base level buffs are as follows. First up, swapping from flurry to focus. A level one meter grants a 5% move speed bonus. A level two meter grants a 10% move speed and a 10% damage bonus. And at level three, you get the most potent form of your buff granting you 15% move speed, 10% damage, and 25% more crit damage. Now when going the opposite direction, swapping from focus to flurry, a level one meter grants a 5% attack speed bonus. A level two meter grants a 10% attack speed bonus and a 10% damage bonus. And at level three, you again get the most potent form of your buff, granting you 15% attack speed, 10% damage, and 25% more crit damage. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this guide will be focusing on the pinnacle engraving variant of this class, which takes full advantage of stance swapping and replaces your meter with a much more potent buff. This will instead make your level 3 flurry stance buff grant a 15% damage increase, a 15% attack speed increase, and a 25% crit chance increase. Now your level 3 focus stance will grant a 20% damage increase, 15% movement speed increase, and a massive 50% more crit damage. Now this is what I and many others believe to be the better variant of this class. Now if you are someone however who feels a bit intimidated by stance swapping or you just don't like the feel, I encourage you to look into the control engraving variant instead, which will lock you out of your focus stance in exchange for all your flurry skills doing 36% more damage across the board. Now I always say play what you enjoy, not what the meta dictates, because your enjoyment of a class is more important to your long term happiness. Now, if enough players want to see that variant built out in a guide, I can certainly look into doing that in the future. With all this in mind, the general playstyle of this class will have you wanting to rotate skills within the same stance to fully charge three bars of your identity gauge as quickly as possible, before switching to your other stance to take advantage of your buff. Now, the same thing applies once you switch stances and gain that buff. Rotate through your skills again quickly to get your identity gauge to three bars and swap stances again. Doing so with an endgame build will have you maintaining your buff with a 100% uptime, making you dish out incredible amounts of damage. Now let's talk a few pros and cons for the class. The great thing about Glavier is that so many of her skills are completely viable filler choices. While I will be outlining my recommended build, I highly encourage you to try out other skills if certain ones just aren't vibing for you. The Glavier is also the only other class besides the Gunlancer that has a parry built into her Dragon Scale defense skill. Now this provides you with a panic button to super armor through boss attacks if your mobility options are on cooldown or you just want to avoid an attack. Additionally, because your skills and buffs will often provide you around a 100% crit rate, you're allowed to be flexible in your positioning. Just because a majority of your abilities say that they have back attack properties doesn't mean that you're forced to chase back attacks. That being said, definitely take them when you can. Now the only real downside with the Pinnacle Glavier is that she has a lack of alternate engravings. Now for the most part, you'll be restricted to the pricey ones, Grudge, Cursed Doll, and Keen Blunt. 
with no real wiggle room there. We will be touching on engravings and our reason for choices later on in the build. Now when it comes to building out a pinnacle glavier, a raid skill build and a mobbing skill build are almost identical. Only one or two skills really need to be swapped out, so we'll include those at the end and purely focus on the ideal raid loadout in this guide. Now we will also highlight the runes that you should be focusing on for specific skills. Now let's start out with our main utility skills since they will help in positioning and setting up all of your other attacks. Flash Kick is the Glavier's primary mobility skill that also deals moderate damage with a back attack modifier. You'll use your spear to advance 7 meters forward, dealing damage 3 times before following up with a strong kick for additional damage. Now here, we simply get this skill to level 4 to grab the excellent mobility tripod, adding an additional 2 meters to your initial dash. We also pair this skill with the Rage Rune, since it's low cooldown and already being used for mobility. This will give us a chance of granting us additional attack and move speed for 6 seconds. Vault, on the other hand, is the Glavier's only counter skill, and will have you slam your spear into the ground before somersaulting to deal high damage. Now, like Flash Kick, we only level this to level 4, and take excellent mobility, which allows our character to move forward 3 meters before executing this counter, giving us more mobility and gap close to your kit. Cutting Wind is up next, and I mainly use this for identity generation. It allows you to move forward 8 meters to inflict moderate damage 3 times to enemies before returning to your initial position, inflicting another instance of moderate damage. Now you'll level this up to level 7 in order to grab firepower control for 30% meter gain and quickness to reduce your AoE size by 20% while changing your frontal attack to only one quick instance before returning. The goal is to keep things quick so we can rotate through our skills. Soul Cutter is the next skill that we take and we max this one out. Now this attack will have you sliding forward 3 meters, dealing moderate damage, and immediately traveling backwards 4 meters. Now if you use this attack again, you'll charge forward 4 meters and deal 2 instances of moderate damage before swinging your glaive left and right for 4 more instances of damage. Now we take firepower control for 30% identity meter gain. Brilliant Spear to gain 1 meter and increase your damage by 15%, and Enhanced Concussion, which will elevate this skill to mid to high stagger level, and when attacking a single foe, increase your damage by 60%. Now I prefer this in this slot over something like Chain Slash, mainly because it is more consistent, a bit higher in damage, and much less punishing on your identity gauge if you happen to miss this attack. Additionally, it just gives your kit more stagger options. We also slap the Quick Recharge rune on this skill so we have a chance of reducing our cooldown times on use. Raging Dragon Slash is easily your best stagger ability in your kit, hands down. You enlarge your spear and spin 360 degrees to deal incredibly high damage with a mid to high stagger level. We max this skill out and apply quick prep for cooldown reduction, additional slash to change to combo mode, and provide an additional instance of damage with a 40% damage boost, and awaken, which creates a dragon along your trajectory that attacks 3 times for an additional 50% damage and 25% crit rate. Now you pair this skill with either an overwhelm rune to decimate stagger checks, or a wealth rune to make generating identity gauge really friendly for all levels of play. Now these next two abilities go hand in hand, especially because we're utilizing the Conviction and Judgment combo. Now Half Moon Slash has you drag your glaive across the ground while moving forward and dealing two instances of moderate damage. You'll follow this up with a quick diagonal upward slash that deals massive damage. Additionally, this skill provides both level 2 weak point damage and medium stagger utility to your kit. Now we max this skill out and for tripods, we take Flurry Expertise, Final Decision, and Blade of Tornado, which all massively pump the skill's damage. Now just be warned, when you take Final Decision, this ability will consume 20% of your meter to apply the 60% damage bonus. Now landing this attack will easily gain you that back, but missing it will punish your rotation. We also place the Conviction Rune on this ability as you follow it up immediately with Wheel of Blades. Wheel of Blades will have your Glavier spin sideways, dealing moderate damage 3 times before following up with a high damage finishing blow. Additionally, this skill provides medium stagger and is our main candidate for our Judgment Rune. Now we will be hitting level 10 on this skill as well in order to take advantage of magic control for 50% cost reduction, weak point detection for an extra 30% damage to push immune foes, and consecutive spin, changing the skill to a combo mode and allowing the skill to be used 2 consecutive times and increasing damage by 100%. This gives us the ability to almost guarantee the judgment proc, increasing our resource recovery and skill cooldowns. Finally, we come to the most critical skill in our kit for enabling our red stance, Shackling Blue Dragon. Now this skill is used at the end of our rotation, as it deals a massive amount of damage, does weak point and stagger damage, and most importantly, lowers enemy crit resistance by 8% for 6 seconds for you and your entire party. And we max this skill out in order to take quick prep for cooldown reduction, 
Blitz to reduce the AoE by 20%, but make the attack instantaneous, and Critical Spear, which further reduces enemy crit resistance by 10%. Now, because our skills on the Red Stance almost all crit at 100%, this provides the most bang for our buck at the end of the rotation. We also want to make sure that we're slapping a Focus Rune on here to reduce the skill's MP consumption. Now let's break down the Red Stance skills starting with Red Dragon's Horn and Starfall Pounce both of which do absolutely insane burst damage when combined with swapping over from your blue stance, your pinnacle engraving effect, and shackling blue dragon's crit resistance debuff. Red dragon's horn has the glavier focus their energy, aim and then thrust their spear toward a foe within a 12 meter radius at a 90 degree angle. Now if you land the perfect zone, you'll extend the range to 16 meters and double the damage. And we max this skill out as far as it can go in order to obtain quick prep for cooldown reduction, Spear of Destruction to reduce the width to 45 degrees but guarantee a crit, and Weak Point Detection to increase damage to named or higher foes by 60%. Then we simply attach a Gale Wind Rune to the skill in order to speed up its casting speed, allowing us to chain into our next skill within 6 seconds of swapping stances. Starfall Pounce is another skill that deals massive damage. You jump within 8 meters of the target location and create a shockwave as you land. Incredibly simple move. We bring the skill up to level 10 in order to get weak point detection for a 20% damage increase, quick prep for cooldown reduction, and powerful finish, which makes your crit rate on this skill always hit at 100%. Now in order to make sure that we generate enough red meter, we put a wealth rune on this skill to guarantee that we have the resources to maintain our pinnacle buff. Now we're onto our filler attacks, and dragon scale defense, as I mentioned at the beginning, is one of the best filler skills to have, as it provides you with a counter that blocks attacks from the front negating damage up to 50% of your max HP. Now, if you successfully block an attack within one second of using the skill, you will thrust your spear forward for massive damage. Four-Headed Dragon is another filler skill that has you thrust your spear eight times in front of you for extremely high damage, followed by a finishing thrust that deals around half of what those eight attacks just did. We leave this skill at level one as it does just enough damage without anything else. Now, Thrust of Destruction is more on the moderate side of damage, that has you dealing damage to foes at close range before releasing a beam of energy that deals high damage for 4 ticks. It's another skill that we don't really need to level up. Last up, we have Spiraling Spear, a solid single instance high damage attack that also provides low weak point damage in a pinch. Because that's all it's really used for, we don't bother leveling this one either. Now in terms of tackling horde style content, you simply need more AoE. Now to achieve this, we do a few things. We take Soul Cutter and replace it with a maxed out Wind Splitter. We take Magicka Control, Final Decision, and Giant Wheel to increase our AoE damage and pull enemies in. Then we drop Wheel of Blades down to only level 4, and instead bring Cutting Wind up to max level with the following tripods. Quick Prep for cooldown reduction, Valor for increased damage in AoE, and Enhanced Strike for even more damage. The skill is a great candidate to slot a Protection Rune on to keep you safe while casting it. And that's all there really is to a mobbing build. Everything else remains generally the same, so feel free to tweak your build here to your liking. Now we can't forget to talk about Awakening skills, and surprisingly, both Awakenings for Glavier are great and viable. The choice here is honestly up to skill and preference. Spear Meter is exactly what it sounds like. You'll leap 4 meters backwards, focusing your energy into your spear before throwing it at a target, dealing massive area damage followed by several additional high damage explosions. Now this one does the most damage out of the two, but because it's a skill shot, it is prone to failure with highly mobile enemies. As a bonus, it also deals high stagger damage. Your other choice is Storming Red Dragon, and it's a ground-based channeling attack that unleashes an absolute flurry of attacks while dealing huge stagger damage. Now this can be cancelled at any time by releasing the skill button in case of an emergency. Now my personal favorite is Spear Meteor, but depending on the boss, I will switch to Storming Red Dragon just to make sure I do not miss this awakening skill. Now all of that is what I personally like for my Glavier build, but I wouldn't be doing you all any justice if I didn't tell you my skill rotation. You'll start with Cutting Wind into Soul Cutter for some quick initial gauge generation. You'll follow this up with Raging Dragon Slash for a nice chunk of damage. Then you'll do your Conviction Judgment combo by chaining Half Moon Slash into Wheel of Blades. By this point, your identity gauge should be at 3 bars. Now just before switching, use Shackling Blue Dragon to enable the crit resistance debuff on your red skills. From here, lead with Red Dragon's Horn into Starfall Pounce immediately for extremely high burst damage and near instant full gauge generation. Finish up with Spiraling Spear. If for any reason that your gauge isn't full by this point, whether it be because you aren't in a full endgame build yet or something didn't quite land, continue to do red rotations until it is. As soon as your red gauge is full, immediately swap back to blue and repeat. That's all there is to it. 
Now I find this skill rotation to be incredibly smooth and really consistent in meeting stagger checks while easily keeping my buff up 100% of the time. Next up, let's talk stats real quick. For a pinnacle focus glavier, you want to get as much specialization as possible as it increases the effectiveness of the identity gauge buff when switching stances. From here, you then have two choices for your secondary stat on your necklace. You either go swiftness or crit. Now I personally go swiftness to move about just a bit faster. In terms of engravings, I personally see only one path forward here. Pinnacle synergizes with your heavy specialization spec to grant a heavily enhanced version of your identity gauge buff. Keen Blunt Weapon works incredibly well with Glavier, as she has above a 60% crit rate when swapping into blue stance with max identity gauge. Your shackling blue dragon attack also provides an effective 18% crit rate increase on the debuff target. Lastly, red stance skills most of the time have 100% crit rate. Then we have Grudge. As usual, it gives us an amazing damage increase without needing to worry about positioning of skills. Now it does of course make you take 20% more damage, but as a mobile class, you should have no issues avoiding those attacks. Cursed Doll provides a massive 25% attack power increase at the cost of 25% healing penalty. Again, if you aren't getting hit, you should be fine. Last up, Increase Mass. While it does give you a minus 10% attack speed debuff, the additional 18% attack power is more than worth it. The other cool thing is that your stance swapping generally offsets this. The only downside with this one is that the increased mass stacks additively with Curse Doll. That's what we have to work with. Last up, we need to talk about gems, and which ones that you should ideally look to prioritize since you can only have 11 slots to work with. For cooldown gems, keep an eye out for Half Moon Slash, Raging Dragon Slash, Red Dragon's Horn, Shackling Blue Dragon, and Cutting Wind. For attack gems, focus on Half Moon Slash, Raging Dragon Slash, Wheel of Blades, Starfall Pounce, Red Dragon's Horn, and Soul Cutter. With these gems in place, this should give you the most optimal uptime on your skills, as well as make them hit their absolute hardest. The Glavier is easily one of the most fun classes that I've played with in Lost Ark. It's one that I initially wanted to main, and after getting to finally try it out and test it, I full sent it with weeks of stored materials, and I intend to make it my new main. The class genuinely can do just about everything that you need for a highly mobile DPS class, all while looking extremely badass while doing so. I also want to say that there's no end-all be-all when it comes to building out your characters. Content will constantly change as we get new updates, move towards being equal with Korea, and beyond. With that in mind, I encourage you to try out the build that I outlined above. I think it will set you on the right path for enjoying the character and tackling whatever the game has to throw at you. But don't be afraid to change things up. You may find that you enjoy the class that much more because you built it your own way. Regardless of what class you play, I want to welcome you all to join the Legacy Gaming Discord. Our Legacy Guilds are recruiting again, and we'd love for any active and chill players to come and join us on US East Regulus. You can check the link in the description below to join up and learn more. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you want to help support the channel and spread our content to more audiences. My name is Livid, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.